Welcome to the SaaS Leaders Lounge, your beacon for insights into technology's transformative power. Hosted by me, Ramon. Today's episode spotlights AI's role in advancing social good, featuring she, Lazolo, the dynamic force between Sunrise AI. She's journey from epidemiology to AI innovation exemplifies a deduction to harnessing technology for societal benefit. She, a warm welcome to you. How are you today and where are you joining us from? Thanks, Roman, for hosting me. I am doing well. I am joining everyone from uh, Boulder, Colorado. Fantastic. Uh, Excellent place. I must say, I'm here in London myself, so we're uh, quite a lot of miles distant. But uh, thankful these remote possibilities will allow us to have a great session today, I hope. Yes, definitely. Very (laughs) excited about that. Brilliant. So she, um, transforming from epidemiology to AI is quite a leap. Um, I've got stuck on that word a few times, but hopefully by the end of this podcast, I'll be a master of it. But what inspired the shift and how has your background influenced your approach at Sunrise? Yeah, definitely. So my background is very non-traditional. If you think of someone that does, uh, who is an AI ML engineer. So originally I did my bachelor's in veterinary medicine. So I was actually a vet veterinarian before I came to the US for my graduate study uh, focus on epidemiology. So the transition has been really great. And during my graduate study, I took a lot of statistic class and I took a very lot of interest in understanding all those complicated math. How can I apply that to uh, to work, to society. And I took a lot of interest at that time, started to learn more about machine learning and uh, AI. Uh, so that's how I got into or took an interest in getting into data science and start exploring um, what are the opportunities there that I can leverage the skills that I have learned to build things that I can help people to be better or live a better life. Yeah, that's an amazing journey, I must say, and definitely um, gives a lot of people confidence in that veterinary position that they can look towards the future and actually kind of end up in a career like yourself if that's what they're interested in. But for our audience less familiar with Sunrise AI, are you able to encapsulate its mission and the unique approach it brings to the tech landscape? Yeah, definitely. So here at Sunrise AI, our mission is to equitize capital access for all. Um, that is the mission that we are trying to do, leveraging AI and ML. And how does that translate to what will be the social good that we will be able to impact? Um, think of from a credit risk assessment perspective. Being an immigrant myself, I have the I have experience where when I first came to this country, I had no credit history. So this is a, also a pet personal passion for me to um, leverage AIML to create a, a more fair and equitable solution to help people gain access to capital and to improve their quality of life and have a better opportunity to move up the social ladder. Brilliant. Um, that's inspirational. I must say, um, uh, thank you very much for going into the personal detail as well. Appreciate it. So Sunrise AI is renowned for leveraging AI to tackle financial inclusion, as you've touched on there. Are you able to delve into how your technologies are crafted to meet these complex challenges? Yes, definitely. So at Sunrise AI, at starting day zero, our mission is to remove bias and to uh, provide uh, equitable and inclusive assessment for all of the problems that we're trying to solve. And uh, to address that, we have built a responsible AI advisory board to help us from day zero, how should we be approaching our problem and building our solution uh, in a fair and non-biased way. So that is the first one from a framework building perspective. And then secondly, thinking about um, how traditionally credit assessment is done. And so we learn from the mistake or the challenges there and take that into consideration when I was building out the solution. So thinking of uh, considering various data sources, such as not only taking into account of credit card history, but also what happened into the day-to-day banking um, that happened in people's day-to-day life. What if they don't have credit cards? What if they don't want to use credit cards? How do we think about the assessing someone like that or a business like that? And also thinking about what if somebody like me, new to the country as an immigrant, how do we provide a visibility to somebody's financial health before, for example, in their home country? So those were the um, 
factors that we took into consideration in order to make sure that the solution that we built is inclusive and non-biased. And additionally, um, because in the financial industry is a highly regulated industry, and we want to be able to help the user, uh, given as individual or SMBs or enterprise customer, we want to service the explainability to them so that can help them better understand behind the AI ML algorithm, how do, how does that algorithm come up with the prediction? So can give them insights into what actions they can take to improve, for example, their, their own risk or take actions to address their potential financial uh, stability. And that's how we're addressing to ensure that the products that we built have um, inclusivity in the financial area. And I think that's genuinely impactful on both of the kind of um, uh, points you just mentioned. I think overall, your innovative use of um, AI to basically democratize financial services, not only to address critical needs, um, I think it definitely sends a, a sets a commendable standard for technology's role in social good. And moving on to the next question, I was interested in asking you. In the era where AI biases are a growing concern, how does Sunrise AI actively work to minimize these issues also? Yeah, good question. Um, so one of the things is uh, starting from the product development process. So you don't want to wait until when you push out a product says, oh, we just need to do monitor. So in yeah. the product development process, we have uh, worked alongside with our responsible AI advisor to make sure that everything that we're doing is in compliance with the regulation and to uh, provide measures to help us remove potential bias, such as in our training model training process, we purposely do not use any demographic information or any data that will tell us the geolocation of this potential business or the person, because we know historically, there's a lot of red tapes that have been put on to uh, that will that cause the bias uh, that we have seen today. So those are some of the measures that we have taken in the product development process. And post product development, we also put in place some of the AI governance and monitoring measures that help us capture potential performance degradation and then understand um, what had been going on between the model prediction versus what is going on in the um, real life. And on top of that, uh, going back to the product development a little bit, is also uh, the, the data sources that we use to help us understand um, potential unexpected life events that happen to someone and what's yeah. going on at uh, in the macroeconomic environment, because we all know those things have impacts on uh, our financial life, where given is our income or how we spend our money. So those were the things that we were doing and currently still doing to ensure that we do not bring in any bias to remove as much bias as possible. Um, it's heartening to learn about um, your kind of proactive stance on this. I'm just a personal thing for myself, um, which you kind of um, uh, reminded me of. And when you mentioned you kind of remove um, uh, demographics uh, from the kind of information that you put in, even a personal thing when I used to apply for job applications when I was younger, although I am, um, as they call it, Black British, I used to avoid filling in this section just so that wasn't considered um, uh, and compared with other applicants. But I think the time's changed now for the better, um, you'll hope. So it's especially on um, your dedication to ethical AI development, I think it's essential in building the trust and also ensuring technology benefits are kind of um, uh, bringing social equality as well. So um, looking ahead to the future, the AI field is burgeoning with innovations at the moment. And which emerging trend are you most excited about and how do you envision it shaping the future of the industry and also social good initiatives? I can't help myself by bringing saying a lot of them. So it's definitely the hot trends, the hot kids in the town. So I'm definitely very excited about the applications of LLMs, all this innovation that we can build leveraging the LMs and all this computational power that we are able to have today. So um, some of the things that I'm interested, I'm very excited about is how can we apply to LLMs ethically and responsibly in the rounds of highly regulated industries such as financial industry. So my interest would be my, me and my team is currently working on how can we leverage LLMs to provide extra uh, hyper-personalized financial insights for individuals or small uh, SMB business customers to help them understand their financial life and provides advice for them and uh, 
some of the action items that they can take to become better in their financial life. So those are the things that I'm very excited about in terms of innovation. Brilliant. I think, um, yeah, especially LNMs, um, it, it definitely um, the advancements of them, it mirrors the industry's potential to definitely revolutionize how we address um, so societal challenges overall. And um, now to move on more to a lighthearted section, it would be great to switch gears for a moment to learn more about she behind um, Sunrise AI um, and also your professional achievements. Are you ready for this quick fire section we have? Yes, let's do it. Brilliant. Do you prefer formal attire or casual wear? I definitely prefer prefer casual wear, uh, especially after the pandemic. We've been working from home for a while. I am not going to back to the time where I wear high heels and <laughs> more formal <laughs> attire to go into work. So definitely prefer casual. Okay, me and you both on that one. Um, do you prefer skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding, if either. Can I say none of them? I am not a skier nor a snowboarder. I, uh, I'm i very, very early in my uh, journey of learning to ski or snowboarding. Yeah, <laughs> understood. Um, I'll switch that with a different one then. Do you prefer comedy or drama? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I prefer comedy. Yeah, me too as well. Although I do love a bit of drama, but I think comedy um, keeps me entertained. It depends if there's too much singing or so on in the drama. It's, yeah, can we put me to sleep at times. But do you prefer flying or driving? I prefer flying and maybe prefer driving as I am not the one driving. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, are you an early bird person or a night owl? Um, I am a night owl. I, I, I prefer to get my eight or more hours in. So, especially on the weekends. <laughs> That's the best way to do it, to be honest. Must, um, are you more into cardio or more into weights if you was to um, exercise? I'm in more into cardio. Brilliant. And last question, art or science? Oh, that's a really tough one because I like both. Um, <laughs> if I have to pick, um, if I have another life, I will pick art. Brilliant. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. I think that's the one thing um, we're most certain about that won't be replaced by AI in terms of the uh, worth of it. I know um, we're looking at a lot of film productions being produced, but I think the art that's actually created by hands will definitely still have its um, speciality kept within it and also its uh, worth, hopefully. But moving on, and we like to keep a collaborative nature within our podcast, so we always have our previous guest ask a question for the next and allow you to also ask a question for the next. So previously, we had a gentleman called Jonathan Wall. He's the founder of Castellon AI. They're basically an interactive AI for more better human um, e-recruiting experience. The question centers on the lessons learned from fintech for yourself over the last two decades, two decades and also machine learning based decision making. So particularly in the context like credit scoring and sentences guide, sentencing guidelines in the US, um, which have been influenced by machine learning, as we've seen. So ultimately, Jonathan has asked, what actions can be taken to address and mitigate bias, biases and also enhance equality in these machine-based recommendations? That's actually a really good and very important question. So I would definitely go back to the roots of all the problems where it all generated is the data. Um, whatever that the data that you feed into the model, that's what it learns. So to uh, remove or um, mitigate the potential risk for bias, definitely make sure that the data that we are using is fair. And in some cases, such as in um, healthcare research or in law enforcement, the type looking for equitable data is a challenge because historically there's a lot of human introduced bias in the practices. So in that instances, I would definitely encourage to um, look for things like synthetic data. How can we make sure that we remove the potential um, human introduced bias in that process and taking measures such as can we mask the, someone's demographic information, educational background that will introduce the bias into the process. So definitely making sure that the data sources and the data that we're using is of high quality and to remove as much bias and inequality as possible in when at, at a very first step of us training out AI ML algorithms. And then throughout the process also with um, encouraged to take into consideration what are some other factors that will also 
help prevent or reduce the risk for bias and to help our model learn about what is actually going on in someone's life or some uh, in, uh, entity's life. And uh, also uh, post product development also put into measure in when it comes to um, data governance, the measure for data health and also monitor for model health. So those will be the measures that I would suggest and encourage everyone to try it out to in order to mitigate bias and ensure a more equitable future. Thank you so much for um, the a deep um, answer within that. I'm sure Jonathan will definitely um, have his answer right there. And if he wants to learn more, hopefully I can connect you both together for more of a detailed discussion. Um, thank you so much again. And for our next visionary guest, we have a lady called Anna Rabakitsi. She's basically the founder of the NEO. They're a generative Stripe-like API that can create docs in just a few seconds. So what would your question be for Anna on our next episode? My question for her is what what was the motivation for her to address a problems like the solution that she's building and that okay. yeah that would be my question to her brilliant um uh, that could probably inspire why would you create an organization as well so yeah it's definitely one our listeners would love to hear the answer for as we conclude our insightful dialogue she are you able to share where our audience can discover more about your work sunrise ai and also its contributions for social good yeah, definitely. So um, check out our website, Sunrise AI, sunrise.ai, um, to c keep up to date what we've been up to. And so currently we have um, entered our phase of looking for product market fits, looking for our first batch of customers that we can work with. So some of the exciting yeah. things that we've been doing is we are in conversation um, negotiating contracts with a reservation restaurant reservation platform. So a lot of exciting things to come and also uh, very excited to share more of the progress that me and my teams are making in terms of leveraging our lands to apply, build out more application for the FinTech space. Fantastic. I'll be sure to put all of those details in the About Us of our YouTube, Spotify, and also Apple Music links for the SaaS Leaders Lounge. So our listeners can basically follow your journey. And I also wish you all the best in that adventure, as I know it's going to be an exciting one with many up and down, ups and downs, but you'll definitely make the way out um, from kind of the knowledge I can hear you sharing thus far. But over um Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to the SaaS Leaders Lounge and your favorite podcast platform to catch all the episodes of our AI series and much more. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep pushing the boundaries of how technology can create a more equitable world. Until next time, goodbye. And thanks again for your time, Shi. Thank Take you. Take care. Thanks.